Hi everybody, Bill here from TurboDial with a video that will give a full demonstration and overview of the enhanced inbound calling feature. So here's the topics we'll cover here in this video. If we're gonna, first of all, we'll do a comparison of the standard inbound calling feature, which is available as part of TurboDial Sales Pro, and we'll compare that to enhanced inbound that's available as an upgrade on top of TurboDial Sales Pro. We'll do a demonstration showing you how to acquire configure and then modify an inbound number with enhanced inbound. We'll also do a demo showing how to receive a call to your soft phone in your browser client with TurboDial if you've configured your inbound number that way. We'll go into more detail about how the screen pops work with enhanced inbound and we'll also talk about how to get voicemail coverage on an enhanced inbound number. Okay, let's talk about standard versus enhanced inbound as features in TurboDial. So if you've got TurboDial Sales Pro, then part of that already is the, is the standard inbound capabilities where you can acquire a number for inbound voice and also use it for two-way text messaging. If you need to use text messaging or TurboDial, you will have to acquire an inbound number to support that. You can also configure that number to forward your voice calls to any telephone of your choosing. It could be a landline phone, cell phone, PBX phone, whatever. Those capabilities are existing now as part of your TurboDial Sales Pro. If you get the enhanced inbound upgrade to TurboDial Sales Pro, then there are some additional capabilities. First of all, you can forward your voice calls not just to one phone, but up to 10 different devices can be targeted to forward an inbound number. That can be any combination of phones or TurboDial soft phone clients on PCs. All available devices that you have configured as forwarding endpoints will simultaneously ring when an inbound call arrives. That inbound call will then be connected to the first device that is answered, and the other devices will immediately stop ringing. That's how inbound forwarding works with enhanced inbound. Just as you can with outbound calls, you can also record your inbound calls if you have enhanced inbound. You can receive inbound call alerts, which some people call screen pops, and we'll go into some detail about those. You can document each call with automatic call notes. These are very similar to the call notes that are created in association with outbound calls with TurboDial. And you can build reports for your dashboard using those call notes that help you track your calling activity and the activity of your agents. Let's switch over to a TurboDial screen for a moment and do a live demonstration. Here we have the inbound and SMS section of the TurboDial screen. And I've got a red pencil for modifying a number and a green plus sign for adding a number. If you are logged in as the owner of your TurboDial account, then you will have these buttons available to you. Of course, if you're not logged in as the owner, then these buttons don't appear. Let's add a number. Click the plus button there. This screen has not changed. With enhanced inbound, this is identical to the screen for standard inbound. I'm just going to add a number real quick. Let's, let's say we want to add a number in the 952 area code. I'm going to uh, add some wild cards of seven asterisks behind that 952, so it doesn't mean that 952 is going to be in the area code position for that number. I'm going to leave it as a voice required number in SMS, so that I can use it for SMS also. And I'm going to search for that number. Okay, after several seconds of searching, it's come back and offered me several numbers here. I'm just going to choose the very first one. I'm going to have that number forwarded. That got to give it an email address for my text messages as a backup. Okay, I've now set up configuration for this inbound number just as I would have for the standard inbound feature in TurboDial. I'm going to go ahead and purchase it. Okay, so 952-657-7679 is now a part of my TurboDial account. And there it is right there. Now before we go in and modify this, let me go back and show you some differences to anticipate. The screens for modifying an enhanced inbound number is different than with the standard inbound feature. So in standard inbound you had one screen when you clicked that red pencil button where you could make your modifications. You could change the forward to number, you could change your backup email address for forwarding SMSs, and you could give it an optional label. You could also delete the number. With enhanced inbound, that is now broken down into two screens because there's more settings to configure. Screen one is similar but different than the standard inbound screen. You can still configure whether it's to be used as SMS. You can still give it a forwarding email address for SMS. 
but the window on the standard inbound side where you set up your four or two number, that no longer exists on this first screen. You can or still provide an optional label just as you could on the standard side. Now there's a couple of new fields. Users to alert. This is where you're going to set up the email IDs for TurboDial users that you want to receive a screen pop when a phone call arrives at this inbound number. And you can choose to enter their email addresses here or you can just choose the checkbox of alerting all. You can also choose to record your inbound calls by checking this box. Notice that capability is not available with standard inbound. And now the button is different. Rather than just saying update, it says update and next because once you click this button, this information is saved and a new screen arrives showing you the forwarding destinations for inbound calls. So the number that used to be here on one screen, the forwarding destination for your inbound call, now shows up as one of 10 possible numbers and email addresses where your inbound calls will be delivered. In this case, I've got one phone number and two email addresses. These correspond to Infusionsoft email IDs for users in my TurboDial account. And there's one more item. There's an optional name that I can give to this phone number that will be displayed in the screen pop alert. So for example, if I have my main phone number coming in as a TurboDial number, I could give it that label of main number. If I've set up a TurboDial number just dedicated to a particular campaign, such as a spring sale, I might give it the spring sale flyer label here. I'll show you more about where that shows up on the screen pop. So you can see there's quite a difference between configuring an inbound number for the standard inbound feature versus enhanced inbound. There's several more items that you can configure. Okay, let's transition back now and look at modifying this number. We just acquired this number, 952. 657-7679. We're going to modify that. So this looks familiar because I just showed it to you. You can see that some of the fields are different than they were for standard inbound. I don't need to give it an optional label in the selector. I'll show you how this works. Let's put in a uh, couple of uh, email addresses. Just list your email addresses there are separated by commas. Again, these have to be email addresses of Infusionsoft users who have been activated in your TurboDial account. I can also just click alert all. Now this says additional users to alert. Now why is that additional? The reason it's additional is that on the, on the next screen I can configure the client soft phones that I want to receive this inbound call. Those will by default be alerted with a screen pop. So I don't have to list those again. If I want users to see the screen pop but not actually have the call delivered to their browser soft phone, then I can list them here. I can also choose whether to record calls to this number. So now I'm going to click Update and Next. Those were saved, and now a new window arrives. And here's where I can put in values for forwarding this phone number. Let's start with that one number. And now let's add some soft phone clients. And let's call this the Spring Sales Flyer. I'm going to update that. So now I have this number configured, 952-657-7679. When inbound calls come to this number, it's going to forward to that phone number, and it's also going to forward to this browser soft phone client and to this browser soft phone client. This TurboDial app that I'm currently running is under that Infusionsoft ID, which is one of those IDs I just configured in for that number. So let's place a call to that new number that we just acquired. Okay, see how this number has arrived? And here's the screen pop. I can answer or ignore this call by clicking these two buttons that appeared. I'm going to answer the call. Now let's look at appeared here when I answered that call. Notice that a call note got added and ownership for this call now has been assigned to me since I answered this call in my soft phone client on my browser in TurboDial. TurboDial knows that I took ownership for this call. A little bit later, I'll show you calls where TurboDial is not able to assign the ownership, and you'll have to do that. Secondly, you can see the screen pop shows the name, Spring Sales Flyer. I'll hang up this call. Who the call came from, their phone number, and if it was looked up successfully in Infusionsoft, that's also shown. We'll go into more detail about the screen pop later. Let's make that same call again. So here it is again. Notice I can either answer or ignore. In this case, I'm just going to ignore 
Now in that case, it's still going to ring at the other destinations where it was sent as a call to be forwarded. So ignoring it here simply stops me from listening to the inbound ring at this soft phone client. But that call will continue ringing at the other clients until it gets picked up by voicemail or the caller ends the call. Now let's look in more detail at the screen pops. Now there is a slide in the deck that goes into more detail about the screen pops, but let's actually go and look at in a live demonstration how the screen pops are working. There are two dashboard reports I'll call your attention to, and we'll come back to these in a minute. Bill's inbound calls past seven days, and unassigned inbound calls. There's none currently listed here. So now I've got this number configured as an inbound number that will have calls recorded and screen pops will be delivered. The screen pops will alert right here in the alert section of my turbo dial window. And what that means is I don't need to actually have turbo dial fully open and I'll still see the screen pop show up here. So let's make a phone call to this number that I've just configured. Okay, there's the screen pop. And now the call came in and I answered it. I'm gonna go ahead and hang that up. Now, what's on this screen pop? First of all, is a call label. And this label happens to be black. And that indicates that the lookup in Infusionsoft for the contact that had this phone number is unknown, that there was no contact record found. But there's other information here that's useful. First of all, here's the number that the person called from. That's the number that we use to look up in Infusionsoft to try to find them. Secondly, here's the telephone company's calling name display for this person. Now this is not always filled in in a useful way. Sometimes it's got the city and state. Sometimes it's got the state. Sometimes it says sell your phone call. So there's not always a useful name here, and sometimes it's simply unknown. And then lastly, there's the date and time that the call arrived. Now, since this call arrived and did not find a contact to be associated with, I should be able to find this call in my unassigned inbound call section. If I refresh that, there it is right there. Now, I can show you by opening this note. Here's the note that was left for this call. It's called a turbo dial inbound call to phone recorded. There is actually a recorded link on this call. And if I wanted to listen to that recording, I could click the link and there it is. I'm gonna go ahead and delete that recording. Coming back to that call note again, you can see the date and the time, and you can see that there is no user assigned. Furthermore, it's not linked to a contact record. So if I come back to this screen pop, I can actually add a contact record to associate to this person. Let's say in this case, I know that upon talking to this person when they called, that this is a new contact and I wanna add them as a contact record in my Infusionsoft, I can click that plus button and it asks me if I, if I wanna add a contact record and I do. So it's created that contact record. It doesn't know the name because it can't trust that this is a good name, but it has inserted their phone number as a contact. I'm gonna go ahead and open that contact record and I'll put in a name and save it. And by the way, there's the call note that has now been attached to this new contact. And you can see that the user has also been assigned to the person who clicked the add button, which was me. So if I come back and I refresh this dashboard panel, you can see the call is no longer unassigned. And if I refresh this one, you can see the call is here. Here's the contact that we just added. The user is me that now is associated to that call, and here's my access to that call note. So that's what happens when a call comes in for a contact that is not currently in my Infusionsoft. It shows a lookup of unknown, and it's got a black call label. But now we've got that contact in Infusionsoft. Let's move to a different contact here just for the purposes of demonstration. And let's make that call again. Okay, there's the screen pop. And there's the phone call arriving. Once again, I'll hang up. Now the screen pop is a little bit different this time. First of all, notice that the background of the label is red, meaning this was a contact who was found. And the lookup has the name filled in right there. Whereas before it did not know the name. The telephone company lookup, of course, is the same. Phone number is the same. And there's the time. Now we've added one more button. In this case, the view button. I can press the view button and it moves me to this contact. Since the contact does exist, it's easy to 
quickly move to that contact using the View button. If I go over here, refresh the unassigned call, that doesn't show up here because by pressing the View button, it assigned the call to me, and the contact was known. So I'm going to find it here by refreshing this one. There's that call that just arrived. Now if we go ahead and open up this contact record, I can look down and I can see these two calls now showing as call notes right on the contact record. If I open one of those notes, I can see that the, the recording link is present. I can access the recording for the call easily right there with, by clicking that link. I can see that the call is, was taken by Bill Jenkins, who answered the call. And of course, the call is associated to the contact, William Jenkins. So I've just demonstrated two different kinds of screen pops. The first one came in when there was no contact record found for the phone number, it has a black call label, and the lookup is equal to unknown. The second call arrived, and the contact did exist, and so it was able to look up and find the name of the contact. It was able to make that label red, and it added another button here, which is to go ahead and quickly view that contact in TurboDial. Okay, now what happens if calls arrive and you are not currently logged into TurboDial? You've got the inbound call number set up and configured, but no one in your company is logged into TurboDial. Well, in that case, of course, there can be no screen pop because no one is logged into TurboDial. However, the other features will still remain active. The inbound call, if you set those calls to be recorded, they'll still be recorded. Each call will still be documented with an automatic call note. And if you've recorded the call, you'll find a link to that recording in the call notes. And you'll be able to track your calling activity with the dashboard reports, and that will include calls that arrived when no one was logged in. You'll be able to use a dashboard report to access the recording for a call that was not assigned to a contact, just as I demonstrated a minute ago. Now, there's not a feature in TurboDial to add voicemail to your inbound numbers, but you can still get voicemail coverage on your inbound calls if you choose at least one forwarding destination to be a phone with voicemail coverage. It could be one of your mobile phones, a landline phone, one of your, your voice over IP PBX phones, for example. If any of those destinations where you are forwarding your inbound number is covered by voicemail, then unanswered calls will be picked up by that phone's voicemail service. So that's how you can achieve voicemail coverage with your TurboDial inbound numbers. So there's more user guides that you can access to go into more detail to learn more about the three buttons that show up in the screen pop, which we call the assign buttons. And you can also learn more about how to build those dashboard reports. You can upgrade to the enhanced inbound feature by logging into your TurboDial management account at this location. Find the enhanced inbound on the upgrade menu and, and just click the upgrade button. And of course, you can downgrade at any time. Okay, that's an overview of the enhanced inbound feature with a demonstration. Happy calling, everybody. Thanks.